Hi everyone and welcome to Bent TV. Um, my name is Matthew Wade and I'm a journalist and an advocate. My name is Sarge and I review film for SargeLovesFilm.com. Hi, I'm Adam and I'm a screenwriter. So the three of us are here to today to talk all about queer films, movies, um, everything about that. Um, and today I thought it'd be cool to chat a little bit about bad representation in queer movies. So often you'll hear people asking each other like, what's your favorite gay movie? Or what stuck with you the most? But I thought it might be interesting to flip that and talk about what movies have kind of you've stepped away from because like you don't really find that they click with you. They might just be bad movies, but they also might be pretty like poor, poorly representative of the community. So Adam, do you want to go first? Like, do you have a is there a movie that you're like, oh? Yeah, I've got two actually. I okay. won't go into detail, yeah, but yeah. Um, In and Out was one for me because I just was I don't know. I just wasn't interested in that uh, very fluffy kind of kind of like a rom com movie. Uh, or? Sort of a rom com, but coming of age kind of deal. Mm. Kevin Klein and Tom Selleck as the love interest for each other. I'm like, I don't know, it was very surfacy. He was in love with Barbara Streisand and coming to terms with his sexuality. I found it offensive. The thing is, I don't even know mm. why. I just looked at it and I thought, that's not a real representation. I'm not connecting to that at all. Yeah. Um, the one that I actually loved the film, but yeah. I did find it very negative, was um, Stranger by the Lake. Which I, I actually love that movie. It's so yeah. good. It's not too long ago, maybe, what, five years or so? Maybe. I reckon even less. Like, oh, it's 2014. Yeah, it's 25 oh, yeah. years ago, yeah. I feel like maybe this was possibly before Prep and Pep. Um, and the reason I mention that is because there was a lot of um, condomless sex in the mm. film. And I thought it betrayed their backing as a very self-destructive behaviour, mm. which it does have a stigma of that in the community. And I don't know, I felt like that can sort of mess with people's perception of sex and how they treat sex and safety and risk. It kind of conjures up this like sex panic where it's like, if you're not careful, like you're going to end up like, well, in the movie, like yeah. dead or, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he was a self-destructive character as it was. And that behavior goes with it said, oh, so if you, you know, don't fully respect yourself or something, you must engage, you must probably engage in this behavior. Just on a side note before I move on to side, um, when it comes to like representing that kind of stuff, like sexual yeah. health, like things that are actually really important in the community. Yeah. Do you think that like screenwriters and film, as a screenwriter as well yourself, uh, screenwriters and directors and producers like have a, I guess, an obligation to make sure that they're not spreading like that kind of information, like that negative stigmatizing message? I'd like to say yes, because that's the safe answer. But if you're an artist and you want to yeah, right. create something, I don't think you should be necessarily restricted by mm. the, the social political normatives or the safeties of the time. Yeah. I think if you want to push the limits, but do it in a respectful way, I guess, mm. if that's the word I'm looking for. Um, yeah, go for it. But just, I don't know. I found that very, very uh, prejudiced and, and mm. stigmatic. Yeah. And Sarge? I think for me, I think um, I mean, bad representation. Um, I'm not going to go with a, a queer film, but instead, I'm going to think of characters in mainstream movies that yeah, are queer. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So, as an example, My Best Friend's Wedding, right? Ah, yeah. So now, great, great film, yeah. right? However, Rupert Everett mm -hmm. plays the stereotype. The stereotype, my goodness. Mm. And I think th I find that problematic. And I remember seeing that as, you know, I can't remember when it came out, but as a teenager. And, you know, now that is more likely to shape you as what it, is this what it's like to be gay? Yeah. You know, do I, do I need to love musicals? You know, do I need to love singing? You know, and That's I true. feel as if a lot of the characters at the time in film were stereotypes. Mm. And I find that very problematic. And he looking back now. And charming and had yes, this idealistic. Yes, exactly right. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly right. And you know, it didn't, I think that came out in the 90s. That sort of stereotype didn't end for a long time. Mm. Um, I remember, like my, my favorite film is Legally Blonde, <laughs> if you see the t-shirt. <laughs> but even in, even in Legally Blonde, there's, there's a, a gay character. Mm. And you know, there's a, there's a line in there where um, Elwood says something like, um, gay men know designers, straight men don't. Yeah, right. you know, again, just feeding into that stereotype, I find, yeah. I find that very, very problematic. And yeah, because you know, we're all trying to move away from this. Um, mm. And yeah, you look back at those films from back in the day, if there's yeah. a gay character, it was just the same gay character played by a different actor over and over yeah. again. Yeah, for me, I guess, because I used to be on the selection panel for the Melbourne Queer Film Festival, and so we'd watch all these submissions from up and coming filmmakers and established filmmakers too. Um, and we saw some really, really amazing stuff, like great pieces of art that like obviously people had poured their hearts and souls into. But there were also a lot of cliches that we saw. And so like, I guess for me, some of the more negative movies that I've seen that I've been like, oh, like, can we stop doing this? Are the ones that like re rely on cliche endings. Like, 
when it's a queer movie, um, it's such a cliche for there to be like a really tragic ending where someone loses everything, including sometimes their life, mm. you know, something like that. I'm aware that we shouldn't just pretend that stuff doesn't happen because obviously it does in the community, but I think it'd be nicer sometimes, especially for younger people, to see like really happy, yep. fulfilled, killing it, like queer people on screen, because then they feel like that can be them as well. Mm. Like if you're only seeing, like for myself as well, seeing representation where someone's dead or single or lonely or feeling unfulfilled and they're queer, it makes you feel like, oh, is that what the future holds for me? So I think actually made a really good point, Sarge, which is that, I mean, we're talking previously about uh, how much uh, early exposure to queer stuff shapes you, but I think some of the negative stuff probably shapes people more so than the positive stuff because it sticks out more. Yeah. Like, you're feeling anxious about yourself, and so when you see something negative, it tends to be a lot more glaring, I guess. Yeah. Is, is that, would you agree? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 And I think that's the, the privilege that, you know, um, I guess heteronormity, het what's the word, heteronormativity mm. uh, in film where, you know, you, you think of, say, uh, Tom Cruise in Top, in Top Gun or Tom Cruise in any of those films from the 80s. Yeah, th straight men had people mm -hmm. to look up to and, you know, kind of they, they had that vision of, oh, you know, there's so much I could be, mm. whereas I think w we were sort of... <laughs> We, we didn't get that same sort mm -hmm. of um, opportunity or exposure, yeah. and we got the stereotype yeah. over and over again. It's <laughs> true, and those cliches, you both mentioned some, like you said about like in Legally Blonde, like that all gay men like designers, and you said even with Stranger by the Lake, it's like gay men who are promiscuous and have unsafe sex like deserve to be punished or whatever. I remember there was this horror movie, it was like, I don't know if you've seen it, um, or either of you have seen it, but it's called Jack Frost. It's like the snowman, the killer snowman, yes. but it was the sequel. And in the film, there's one gay character, a token gay character who's like, super like promiscuous and like sexually liberated, whatever. And he's like pretty much the first person to get cut, right? <laughs> and I remember watching that, and even oh though it's supposed to be like this comical, like it's supposed to be like the punchline, like a gag, I was like, come on. It's like, mm. A, it's being like the gay, the gay character goes first because they're the minority, who cares? But also, oh yeah, we, we're not supposed to feel bad that he's going because like, oh yeah, he was an idiot anyway. Like he was just yeah. kind of silly and like trying to, you know, sleep with everyone kind of thing so it happens on all these different levels not even in like big queer movies even in like yeah like yeah. straight movies like my best friend's wedding and stuff so yeah there's still a long way to go in terms of like getting the right kind of representation but yeah i hope it i, I believe it's changing at the moment and i think um you know there's like avenues like netflix they're providing more of a diverse voice mm. uh, however what i'd like to see is that sort of representation in a big budget mainstream movie. Mm. Um, I recently heard that um, in the most recent Avengers film that they wrote a gay character but oh, it was yeah. done uh, uh, just awfully. Why did that happen and why aren't we getting better at it? And I think are we, uh, is Hollywood or um, are filmmakers afraid that you know there's going to be people out there they'll be offended? Like what, what exactly is stopping screenwriters from writing these amazing characters in mainstream movies. We ran out of time <laughs> for this segment today. Thank you so much again for joining me, Sergeant Adam. Um, and thanks for joining us at home at Bent TV. We'll chat to you next time.